Welcome to our lecture online. So here we have another example where we're going to determine the probability distribution. Let's say that we're looking at a manufacturer of light bulbs. They ship boxes of 100 light bulbs at a time. And from measuring or testing some of these boxes, we determine that 90% of the cases, zero of the light bulbs are defective. 7% of the cases, one light bulb is defective. And 3% of the cases, two light bulbs are defective. So what is that? probability distribution look like? Well first let's define a variable. So we're going to let x equal the number of defective bulbs or light bulbs. All right so then we can see that there's only three possibilities. x can be 0, x can be 1, or x can be 2 which makes it well it's a random variable, but it's a discrete random variable because it can only have integer values. So we can then write that the probability that x equals 0 is equal to 9 out of 10, or 0 0.9. And we'll go ahead and use two decimal places. We can see that the probability that x is equal to 1, that's equal to 0 0.07, and the probability that x equals 2 is equal to 0 0.03. Now we know that we're done because when we add them all up, it adds up to exactly 1, which means that the property tells us that it should always be exactly equal to 1 when we add up all the probabilities, and there we go, so we know there's no other possibility. Also, we know that any one of them is always between 0 and 1. So none of them are greater than 1, and none of them are smaller than 0. So we adhere to the two properties. Now, we don't have a good visualization of how that looks. If we now draw a bar graph that's to scale, we'll get the following things. So here we go. On the vertical axis, we have the probability of x. On the horizontal axis, we have x. There's only three values. We can have 0, 1, and 2. And again, those numbers represent the number of defective light bulbs. Here, we can have anywhere from, let's see here, that would be a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, a little bit longer. There we go, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. And then notice that the first bar, because we're going to use a bar graph, a bar histogram, the first one goes all the way up to 0.9. One defective bulb is at 0.7%, which is 0 0.07, which is about here. And the third one, where I have two defective bulbs, is at 0.3, which would be about here, like that. So notice when we draw a histogram bar graph, we have a much better realization, a bit, much bigger, better pictorial of what that looks like. You may think that 7% of the boxes have one defective bulb and 3% of the boxes have two defective bulbs, that that's really bad. Well, in a sense, it kind of is because you don't want any defective bulbs, bulbs, light bulbs, but if you then see it visually, you can see that the number of boxes that are shipped that have no defective light bulbs is far greater than the number that have one defective light bulb and the number that have two. However, from a manufacturer point of view, if this is your business, may not be a good business model because you want these things to be much, much smaller than that in probability, virtually zero, because you don't want any unhappy customers. But oh, after all, it is not a bad ratio. You still have a lot of good boxes being shipped that have no defective light bulbs at all. And if you make it easy for a customer to complain and get a replacement, maybe a little award before turning a bad light bulb in, you might have a good business model. But anyway, this is it, this is what it looks like, the probability distribution, and we have the histogram to give us that visual representation of what it looks like. And that is how it's done. Let's see, what else we got? Mm, finding, all right.